Nature is the wild and wondrous home of so many things, like beautiful butterflies, pretty orchids, and super cute baby seals. Aww. But as lovely as nature can be, it also has a much darker side. For every adorable sea pup, there's a bird with a horrifying mouth full of nightmares. For every butterfly, there's a monstrous sea creature lurking in the ocean. And for every blossom, there's a deadly tree covered from root to branch in inch-long thorns. With so much badass flora and fauna out there, it's time to take a look at some of the darkest and most metal discoveries in the natural world. The Worst Wasps Everyone hates wasps, there are no arguments there. But some parasitic wasp species are so savage that they once had devout theologians questioning if a benevolent god could have really created them. So what is it that makes these bugs so brutal? Well, it might have something to do with the fact that the female lays her eggs under the skin of living caterpillars. The creature then unknowingly incubates the eggs inside its body until the hatchlings chew their way out through its skin. Despite the trauma, the caterpillar survives, or at least it does initially. The wasp larvae then take over the mind of the caterpillar through a cocktail of chemicals they emit. This forces the caterpillar to spin cocoons for the larva, all while using its hollowed out body to protect them like some kind of zombie bodyguard. The tiny wasps eventually emerge from their cocoons and fly away, leaving the caterpillar to starve and the whole horrifying cycle starts again. Yeah, after that I can see why those theologians decided there was no god. But if you want to restore your faith in the world, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? I may not be a god, but my videos certainly shine a light on the more amazing things our planet has to offer. Have I converted you? Great. Now what have we got next? The Zombie Virus If flesh-eating, mind-controlling wasps were too hardcore for you to stomach, then look away before I show you the Cordyceps genus, also known as the Zombie Fungus. Some of you might actually recognize that name from the video game The Last of Us, which sees cordyceps infected humans bumbling about, sprouting huge deformed fungi all over their bodies. While this game is pure science fiction, the real cordyceps fungi actually does take over the bodies of living creatures. Spores of this parasitic fungus attach or infiltrate the exoskeletons of foraging insects like ants. It slowly invades their bodies and their minds before compelling its host's infected brain to climb up to a vantage point about 10 inches off the ground. There, as the spores grow and feast on the insect's innards, it forces the ant to grip the stem and wait, gruesomely, for its death. Only then does the fruiting body of the fungus erupt, turning the corpse into a launch pad for brand new spores. The infection is so virulent that it can wipe out entire colonies made up of millions of ants in just a matter of weeks. Though it's not just ants that it can affect. There are, remarkably, more than 600 different types of cordyceps fungi, and each type specifically targets just one species. Ugh, kinda makes you wonder if The Last of Us will eventually become a documentary. Otterly Insane is there anything cuter than an otter in a hat? When they're all dressed up like this, these charismatic members of the weasel family don't look like they could hurt a fly. But several species of this family have a hardcore secret hidden up their furry sleeves. Because they share their worldwide wetland habitats with dangerous predators, they've developed an impossibly ballsy defense. In large groups, they surround and, astoundingly, bully approaching predators. like this crocodile in the Sungai Bulo Wetland Reserve of Singapore. Despite its menacing lunges, the otters continuously taunt and tire out the crocodile from all angles until the reptile unbelievably retreats. How incredibly cool is that? Although they don't just bully their crocodilian neighbors, North American river otters are at the top of the food chain in their natural habitats, chowing down on everything from fish and amphibians to small alligators. But how do they contend with the powerful jaws of those prehistoric predators? Well, it's a matter of endurance. 
otters have access to long-lasting sustainable energy, whereas gators' slow metabolisms only allow them short, sharp bursts of energy, like scaly grenades. After a few minutes of thrashing and rolling around, the gators beat, and for expending all that energy, its muscles release a torrent of immobilizing lactic acid which incapacitates it. So even as the otter uses its razor-sharp teeth and claws to rip through the scaly hide and starts to chow down, the alligator is still alive. I mean, eating an alligator is a statement, but eating one alive might just make this the most metal meal in history. Volcano Snails Now, snails aren't typically seen as hardcore animals, but there's one hard exception to the rule. Meet the scaly foot snail, or sea pangolin, which has evolved a shell made out of iron sulfide. I'll repeat that for those of us that don't speak science. This snail has a shell that's literally made out of iron. Clearly, this is no ordinary snail, and that's because it doesn't live in ordinary conditions. It can be found latching onto hydrothermal vents about one and a half miles underwater with crushing pressures and super hot temperatures that can reach a spicy 750 degrees Fahrenheit. That's four times the boiling point of water. These volcanic plumes provide the snail with all the deep sea nutrients it needs to survive, but the extreme heat, pressure, and nearby predators have forced the snail to adapt over millions of years. Thanks to a protein-producing gene mutation, iron sulfide not only makes up this mollusk's shell, but also those strange scales covering its foot. And it's this scaly set of armor that makes it the most metal animal on the planet. Literally. Wild Wildebeest Anyone who's seen Disney's Lion King will know that the most heart-racing part of the film is when the wildebeest starts stampeding down that impossibly steep ravine. While the cartoon makes this scary scene look a little exaggerated, it's actually based on real wildebeest's death-defying behavior. Every year, in one of the largest annual migrations on Earth, approximately 1.2 million Serengeti wildebeest begin to move in search of greener pastures and fresher water. But as they approach the Mara River, the herd seems to abandon all sense of… well, sense. Instead of crossing at a point where the river is close to the shoreline, millions of wildebeest scuttle down the impossibly steep cliffs, kamikazeing themselves into the rushing water below. Some don't even wait until the cliff is remotely close to the water and hurriedly launch themselves into the ground instead. Oh, I felt that! While time is clearly of the essence, this rushing rampage claims the lives of around 6,250 wildebeest every year, although their decomposing, nutrient-rich bodies do go on to nourish the surrounding landscape and wildlife within it. So I guess this is just the death metal version of the circle of life. Roctopus the hilariously squishy, jelly-like appearance of an octopus and other soft-bodied cephalopods may make you think they're not all that dangerous. But despite their looks, these eight-armed creatures are actually some of the most devious predators in the ocean, because when it's time to hunt, they literally leap into action. Just wait for it. Clearly, Chardonnay missed out on this amazing sight, but it's a brilliantly brutal example of just how calculating octopi can be. I mean, have you ever seen an octopus run and pounce before? Well, unfortunately for the crab, this is just the beginning, because beneath that squishy exterior, all octopi have a powerful beak, a lot like a bird's. In smaller octopi, the sharp point and powerful clamp of these beaks are more than enough to crack through a crab shell. But the largest cephalopod beak ever discovered was as big as a man's hand. From this, scientists determined the animal had a bite force that was well over 1,000 pounds per square inch. For contrast, it takes just 900 pounds of pressure to break an average human femur, the strongest bone in our bodies. Thankfully, most common octopi are only large enough to give humans a painful pinch, although it might make snorkelers think twice about trying to pose with these slippery suckers. Hardcore Camouflage 
Animal camouflage has developed over the course of millions of years to help them blend into their scenery, be it to avoid predators or hide in plain sight of prey. While some use this amazing ability to disguise themselves completely, others have developed a crazy camouflage tactic that, ironically, stands out. You see, at first glance, the brightly colored Atlas moth appears as big as it is colorful. With its wingspan able to stretch almost 11 inches across, it's pretty hard not to notice. But on closer inspection, the drooping tips of its wings incredibly resemble two snake heads. And that's not by mistake. When perched on a branch, the deceptively snake-like designs confuse nearby hungry birds, making them think twice before trying to search the moth's tree for a tasty treat. And they're not the only creatures with this deadly-looking feature. The daring owl butterfly chrysalis, for instance, also resembles an unfathomably realistic snakehead. Look, the details are so on point that there's a slit of a pupil inside the snakish eye, and it even rears up just like if a snake is disturbed. Now that is some seriously hardcore camouflage. Honey Buzzard Don't Care now, most people have heard of the honey badger, which was named by the Guinness Book of World Records as the world's most fearless animal. Their fourth of an inch thick hide makes them impervious to the stings of dangerous Africanized honeybees, allowing them to boldly break into hives and lap up the honey with ease. But they're not the only animal that dares to brave these seriously painful stings. Honey buzzards also swoop in and attack exposed hives, but instead of going for the sweet golden treat, they pluck out the eggs and larvae stored in the honeycomb, and this diet means they can attack both bee and wasp nests alike. How hardcore! As they fearlessly feast on each individual grub, these birds are stung repeatedly, but Fortunately, the scale-like feathers around their eyes provide some armor against the onslaught, while observations suggest some species are immune from the stings of even the largest hornets. Well, move aside, honey badger, because it looks like honey buzzard is coming for that most fearless title. Headhunter Elk may look majestic, but when it comes to mating season, the males transform into 700-pound bulldozers, with their antlers becoming giant spiked weapons attached to their skulls. They compete for the right to mate with females by clashing their heads together to assert dominance. Displays like this are definitely one of the most macho ways to get a girlfriend, but they can come with unexpected consequences, like these two, or I guess now one elk, found out. Taken in 2014, these two battling beasts clearly went head-to-head -head and got tangled up in each other's antlers. They must have been in total deadlock until one of them, ironically, died, possibly from starvation. Now, elk rutting season usually peaks around September, but this image was captured in January, meaning that buck might have been wearing the head of his enemy for over five months. Though it's not just elk that suffer from this impossibly metal mishap. In 2018, a white-tailed buck was spotted in Walhalla, Nevada, with the perfectly preserved head of its competitor lodged in its antlers. That's certainly one heck of a trophy. But fortunately, elk and deer shed their antlers yearly. So as badass as they look, they won't be staring into the eyes of their once rivals forever. Buffalo and Behold now, elk and deer aren't the only animals that like to lock horns to settle disputes. African buffalo also battle it out to establish who gets the right to mate with the ladies, but they butt heads a little more literally. In adult males, the horns of these huge beasts join in the middle of their head. This helmet-like plate is called a boss, which the buffalo use to ram their opponents head-on with. Considering they can run up to 35 miles per hour and weigh up to 1,840 pounds, that'd be like watching two small cars collide. So the thicker the buffalo's protective boss, the more likely they are to be the, well, boss. But to really deal some damage, buffalo will lock their horns with the opponent and then rapidly twist their necks to the side. This drives the points of their horns into the sensitive section of their opponent's face, which can force them to back down. Youch! Although, fortunately, I hear chicks really dig scars. Oh dear. 
Anyone who's ever seen the film 127 Hours will know just how terrifying being pinned against a rock face in the middle of nowhere must be. Spoiler alert, James Franco made it out okay, but this poor deer who suffered a horribly similar fate wasn't as lucky. It looks like this buck must have slipped into the crevice and perished as a result, but all its fleshy organic matter decomposed soon after, leaving nothing but its bright white skeleton wedged in between the rocks. Guess you could say the buck stops here. Now, jokes aside, it may look like a phenomenally freak accident, but it's not the only one of its kind. Back in 2009, a photographer discovered this adult moose who'd also stumbled inescapably into a muddy crack and been left to decompose. I suppose this serves as a warning never to mess with crack, not even nature's crack. Predator vs. Porcupine it takes some serious kahunas to mess with a porcupine. These large rodents are covered in sharp, pointy spines known as quills to protect them from predators. And like that didn't already make them the most hardcore coats in the world, each quill is also covered in maliciously microscopic fishhook barbs. So should any predator try its luck, the quills detach and embed themselves painfully in its flesh. And not only are they painful to remove, but any movement can actually force the quills deeper into the tissue. And this is something that predators, like this snake, find out the excruciatingly painful way. This snake was caught painfully digesting an entire porcupine. As it made its way through the gut of the snake, its quills gradually punctured the reckless reptile from the inside out. Looks like this porcupine fought to the bitter end. Perturbing Pelicans If Finding Nemo taught us anything, it's that pelicans are regarded as funny, water-based birds that dopely scoop up fish using their famously wobbly throat pouches. But watching these birds in real life is the farthest thing from family-friendly entertainment. While their main diet consists of fish, crustacean, and other marine animals, they also gobble up smaller birds. In some cases, this bizarre bird feeding behavior can be explained by a limited food supply, which forces the pelican to eat whatever they can find. But sometimes, with an abundance of food, they'll inexplicably choose to chow down on a smaller species. <laughs> Because they have no teeth, they have to keep their beaks clamped firmly shut until their feathery prey stops moving. Only then will they wiggle their throats to sickeningly swallow them down whole. But as horrifying as that is, it's not the worst thing they do. When it comes to feeding baby birds, most adults regurgitate pre-digested food into the hungry mouths of their waiting chicks. But when pelican chicks are a certain size, their parents can just open up and let the chicks dive in, allowing them to lap the food up straight from their gullets. <laughs> Satanic Sandbox Tree Ever wondered what a tree designed by Satan would look like? Well, there's a good chance it'd be South America's impossibly painful-looking sandbox tree. Able to grow up to 130 feet tall, these gray-barked trees are covered from root to tip with gigantic cone-shaped spikes that each measure up to an inch long. These bulbous barbs deter any hungry herbivore from snacking down on it as it grows. The spikes also stop animals clambering up into its branches to eat its precious berries. But while its fruits may look like little pumpkins, they're actually ticking time bombs. When fully mature, they explode outwards and fling their hard, flat seeds off in every direction at speeds of up to 150 miles per hour. But for all its exploding fruit and spikes, those aren't its only defense mechanisms. The sap of the sandbox tree is also incredibly poisonous and can cause stomach problems, skin rashes, and even blindness. Man, this thing really isn't messing around. Gut feeling. At first glance, what does this look like to you? Some alien sea creature, maybe? Or a nightmare inducing plant? Well, brace yourself, because this is actually the throat of the weirdly adorable sea turtle. Those squishy spikes are called papillae, and they're not just found in their throats. 
Opening up the mouths of many species of sea turtles reveals these jagged holes of doom lined with hundreds of those fleshy spines. But while they look like they've been plucked straight out of my worst nightmares, these backwards-facing barbs actually serve a pretty incredible purpose. As sea turtles chow down on their favorite foods of jellyfish and seaweeds, their stomachs also fill up with seawater. So, they vomit up all the water. But the barbs trap the food in their stomachs to keep it from coming out, like a kind of reverse filter. But turtles aren't the only seafaring animals that sport these super freaky papillae. Super sweet Adelie penguins only have to open their bills to reveal some kind of portal into hell. Like turtles, most penguins have rows upon rows of papillae lining the inside of their bills as well as their tongues. These help the birds get a good grip on slippery fish, ensuring they only move in one direction, down the penguin's throat. <sighs> I guess that's another animal I can cross off my super cute list. Grim Geese Geese, known justly as the worst animals on the planet, also have some of the most horrifying mouths in the world. Just about everyone has been hissed at by one of these aggressive animals, but if you've dared to get closer, you might have spotted the serrated edges lining the beaks and tongues of these vicious walking vuvuzelas. They look like rows of tiny, terrifying teeth, although they're not. Phew, for a second there, I thought God really had abandoned us. Scientists believe birds did have teeth between 80 and 100 million years ago, though these were gradually bred out until only small spiky serrations of cartilage called tomium remained. But don't be fooled by the word cartilage, because tomium isn't soft or bendy. It's a bone-hard material that these omnivorous geese use for ripping apart vegetation and gripping prey, so they could easily draw blood from a human if they land a well-timed bite. Like geese weren't bad enough already. Scary Snapping Turtle Snapping turtles come in all shapes and sizes, from the common variety that can reach, on average, up to 14 inches in length, to the truly gargantuan alligator snapping turtle that can measure in up to 2 feet long. But no matter the size, the infamous bite of any snapping turtle is enough to make full-grown women scream in fear. Here. Do you like that? Hilarious as it is, Karen here was right to scream. That fast, reflexive bite is designed to help them catch quick-moving prey, from fish and insects to other smaller turtles. And thanks to that sharp beak and strong jaw, the common turtle can clamp down with close to 1,000 pounds of pressure per square inch, or PSI for short. For contrast, a Bengal tiger delivers a bite with 1,050 PSI. While its teeny tiny mouth means you're not at risk of having one of these things chomping through your arm, it's still more than enough to deliver one seriously painful bite. Ah! Oh boy, he got me! Its alligator cousins, on the other hand, really shouldn't be messed with. Weighing up to 175 pounds, which is more than an average adult woman, the massive maws and razor-sharp beaks of these reptiles make them superior shearing machines. Regardless of their size, taunting these turtles is a supremely bad idea, as this idiot found out. He was posing with the creature when it suddenly bit him on the lip. The painful lesson gave him a seriously swollen reminder not to mess with snapping turtles in the future. Killer Cassowaries Standing up to 6 feet 6 inches tall and weighing up to 132 pounds, the brilliant blue and red plumage of the huge, flightless cassowary is certainly a striking feature. But while they may look pretty, a quick peek at their feet reveals why these feathery fiends are considered to be the most dangerous birds in the world. With the terrifying talons on its massive, scaly feet able to reach a gargantuan 5 inches in length, it should come as no surprise that it's also known as the dinosaur bird. I mean, they look like they could be the claws of an ancient velociraptor, and the way they use them is eerily similar. If a cassowary feels threatened, it'll leap up and strike out with those terrifying talons. While more than 150 attacks on humans have been reported, these dangerous, dagger-like appendages can inflict lethal wounds that have fatally injured at least one person. Who knew birds could be so badass?
Snaggletoothed Snake Eel On the day that Mother Nature decided to create the Aplatophus Zoro, otherwise known as the Snaggletoothed Snake Eel, she must have been feeling pretty satanic. At nearly three and a half feet long with a bulbous head, elongated jaw, and terrifying array of teeth, it really is nightmare fuel incarnate. But when this particularly disturbing specimen washed up onto the shore of Puerto Vallarta in Mexico back in 2018, the world assumed Mother Nature had completely lost the plot. The impossibly large carcass, bulging eyes, and ferocious fangs makes it look more like an alien than any real-life sea creature. But internet detectives got to the bottom of this amazingly metal discovery quickly and explained that the decaying remains of this snake eel were bloated, hence its brutally bulging appearance. Well, until Mother Nature stops listening to death metal, I'm not setting a single foot in the ocean. The Ocean's Apex Predator Thanks to pop culture, great white sharks have been hyped up as the most metal predators prowling our planet's oceans. But while they're often billed as unstoppable hunting machines, there's an even bigger predator lurking beneath the waves that can turn this feared fish into lunch. Killer whales. Also known as orcas, these black and white behemoths can reach up to 32 feet in length, which is about the size of a standard school bus, and is over 10 feet bigger than a large great white. And they don't just attack using their size, but also their smarts. The piebald pack animals work together in small groups, like this one, to tire out and overpower the shark. There we go, there we go, there we go. These black and white gangs sometimes hunt the sharks down just to play with them. Big monster great white. Look at that. Big great white. Yeah, guys, here's a, here's a shark. Great white. Chasing them around and even tormenting them before feasting on their fatty, nutritious livers. I mean, is there anything more metal than treating an animal with up to 300 sharp, serrated teeth like a plaything? I guess they're not called killer whales for nothing. What's the most metal thing you've ever seen out in the natural world? Let me know down in the comments below. And thanks for watching.